Hey everyone, Justin from Core Performance coming to you live from our ISH studio here in Virginia. Today we're going to address a topic where we get, have been getting questions literally for years, almost since the start of the company. Play carrier or chest rig? And when I say we've been getting questions about this, I mean we've been getting requests to build an ice plate adapter for chest rigs for years. Uh, we just haven't had the bandwidth to do it until now. But a lot of those questions also stem into, hey, should I, I get a plate carrier? Should I do a chest rig? Which one should I build out? Where should I put my ice plate? Whatever. So we figured it would be helpful if we just did an overall video to cover this since we get so many questions about it. And we're just going to go through a number of different things. We've come up with an acronym that will help you figure out what right the setup is that's right for you. And it's called MESSI. And it's M-M-E-S-I. And it stands for Mission medical, environment, sustainment, and identification. We're gonna go through all of those things and just a little bit more, so stay tuned and let's get started. All right, welcome back guys. Okay, let's dive right into this. The first letter in Messi is M. The first two letters are actually M, but the first M stands for mission. And mission all pertains to, are you military, law enforcement, private security contractor, uh, or a prepared citizen, right? Now for military, law enforcement, and private security contractors, your mission is really largely dictated by people, not you. <laughs> and the, what you can do in that mission or in that assignment, in that job, is also dictated largely not by you. Um, there's going to be, you know, depending on who you're with or what you're doing, it's going to be SOPs, it's going to be a PNP, a TTP, or insert any other alphabet soup here uh, that's going to govern what you can do, how you can do it, and that sort of thing. And it's probably going to be written by some lawyer sitting in a nice, cushy, air-conditioned office probably not too far away from here, unfortunately, that has nothing to do with what you're actually doing in the field, and worse yet, has probably never done your job. So we're not gonna dive into that, but we are gonna talk about the area where there's a lot more variables, and that is the area of prepared citizens. We got different states, different municipalities, different laws, slight variations, sometimes not so slight variations, and that's where a lot of these questions might be more relevant. Uh, you're not really driven by a specific uh, PNP, so that stands for Policies and Procedures, uh, or SOP, it stands for Standard Operating Procedure, some type of document like that. It's not really governing what you're doing. Um, so there's a lot more variability and a lot more freedom to decide what's right for you. We're gonna focus our efforts on that question today. So that is mission, but the mission should drive your decision-making and at least set the framework or the context for how we're gonna go through everything else. So what comes after mission? What comes after mission is medical. What does medical have to do with a plate carrier or a chest rig? Should I carry medical? Of course you should carry medical, but that's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about today is your access to advanced medical or trauma care. Namely, if you have limited access to advanced medical care, uh, limited access to trauma skills, um, you're going to want to probably place a premium on injury prevention and protection. And if that's the case, plate carrier wins hands down. I think we're probably gonna give this one to plate carrier. Now, if you do have access to advanced medical care, uh, it's readily accessible, it's easy to get to, or you can do it yourself, or maybe your spouse, your wife, your husband, whatever, your son, daughter uh, is a surgeon or an ER doc or something like that, then maybe you can uh, take a little bit different of approach and you can deprioritize armor uh, in favor of things like speed, endurance, maneuverability, and uh, caloric consumption efficiency, right? So if you're carrying less weight, you're gonna burn less calories, you're gonna sweat less, you're gonna consume less water. Um, so there's a whole mass begets mass uh, thing that you start to benefit from. Uh, it can also hurt you or penalize you, and we can get into that in some of the detailed articles that we'll provide below. So if you have access to medical, advanced medical care, you can deprioritize armor and you can look at maybe a chest rig being more viable for you. Okay, so what comes after medical? What comes after medical is environment. And my environment has several components to it. Uh, the first component to environment is urban versus rural. That's pretty simple. There's a lot of people that have done a little bit more uh, in-depth research. And again, we're gonna put detailed articles in the show notes below um, that are gonna dive into each one of these topics in a lot more detail than we're gonna do here in this video to try to keep it short and just uh, get everybody the right questions that they need to be asking to find the right kit for them. But going back to environment, so environment, the first question is urban versus rural. Urban versus rural is actually pretty simple. 
If you live in an urban environment, which according to the U.S. Census Bureau, 80.7% of the U.S. population lives in urban environments, you're probably going to want to go with a play carrier. Play carriers and urban environments kind of go hand in hand because urban environments are 360 degree threat environments. You have unknown attack vectors. It is armor all day long, right? You're going to probably want more protection. Now, in a rural setting where you have known attack vectors, known vectors of approach, um, and you have a lot of standoff and you have lower density, then chest rigs are probably the way to go there. Okay, you have a lot more options. Um, you have a lot more time and distance, which are basically the same thing. Uh, so you're gonna probably wanna go chest rig. Okay, next up is climate. Now climate doesn't actually dictate whether you pick a plate carrier or a chest rig. What it does dictate is how you equip, build out, equip and build out your play carrier or your chest rig, what accessories you put on it in that build out, and then which model you select, right? So are you gonna select a play carrier that has uh, active um, thermoregulation technologies built into it, like our ice plate XO? Are you gonna, you know, do you live in a climate that doesn't really benefit from those things? That's not really a lot of climates on earth, you know, so uh, some things to think about. Do you have higher humidity? Do you have lower humidity, more arid climates, right? So more arid climates, um, passive ventilation convection technologies are going to be a little bit better there. Uh, and that's going to be things like our ice vents or 221B tactical, things like that. Uh, just make sure you avoid foams because foams uh, are death, really. Uh, foams absorb water and they are insulators. So they're going to retain body heat uh, in really hot climates. That's going to be not great. And in all climates, moisture retention is not great. So just avoid foam. Uh, but again, there's other technologies, you know, our ice vents. Uh, is what we do, but 221B also has a great um, ventilation uh, technology as well. Uh, and you're gonna wanna make sure you avoid weight. Now in humid climates, okay, uh, you're gonna not benefit so much from evaporative or convective technologies. Convective technologies uh, require there to be some difference in the relative humidity levels so that you can actually have an evaporation uh, reaction take place. In human climates, that evaporative reaction can't take place. And that is why we sweat so much more in human climates like Florida or Georgia, or, or frankly, even here in Virginia. And in those cases, you're gonna want some type of conductive thermoregulation technology. And an example of that would be something like our ice plate. So again, climate isn't going to drive whether you select a plate carrier or a chest rig, but it is gonna drive how you build it out, right? So on this chest rig here, um, we have our new ice plate XO CRH, which stands for chest rig hydration. Uh, and I'm just gonna turn this around real quick so you can see um, what it looks like. And uh, we'll uh, provide more details on that. But again, climate is really gonna drive uh, you're thinking about how you build out either your chest rig or your plate carrier, okay? So next up on environmental is terrain. Higher altitudes, lower altitudes, open terrain, uh, large, with minimal changes in elevation or uh, rough terrain with lots of changes in elevation. That's as, as kind of basic and, and broad as we can put it. If you live at a higher altitude, you are not gonna wanna carry armor. It is going to suck, okay? So you're going to, that's gonna be chest rig all day long. If you live at a lower altitude and you have greater metabolic efficiency, then you can probably go with a plate carrier. Uh, if you have lots of changes in elevation, undulations, rolling hills, mountains, et cetera, chest rig. If you have large, flat, open plains, uh, easy to move in spaces, play carrier, okay? Um, again, there's a little bit more to it than that, but those are the basic rules that could get you into a good place. Uh, next up in environment is legal, okay? And the, the shortest way to sum this up is do you, are you finding yourself in a rule of law situation or a without rule of law situation? In a rule of law situation, a lot of things are gonna be important that may not be important in without rule of law. Things uh, like target identification, um, articulating a justifiable use of force, duty to retreat, castle law, castle doctrine, knowing all of those particulars for where you live is super, super important in rule of law. And you need to think about how you set yourself up to be successful in those situations, right? Um, because if you have to, if you find yourself in a use of force situation in rule of law, okay, there's going to be, uh, 
an investigation, and there's, there's going to be legal action that happens after it. And you need to be able to put yourself in a position to be successful in that. This is not legal advice. I want to be very clear about that. We're just trying to give you some things to think about. So if you have a greater onus on adherence um, you know, to local laws during an ROL situation, then you're probably going to want to do things and set yourself up with situations that give you a little bit more time, a little bit more standoff, and a little bit more bandwidth. And that's going to favor armor. Uh, even in high density situations, armor can act as a stand-in. Protection can act as a stand-in for time or distance. Give you a little bit more time to achieve positive target identification, articulate a justifiable use of force, that sort of thing. If those things are not a factor in without rule of law, um, and those things can be temporary or permanent, then you might have the freedom to choose something like a chest ring. But that's the basic overview on the legal component to the environment. Uh, the last aspect of environment is social political. Okay, now social political, you're going to want to uh, think about whether you're planning for mass civil unrest, so like the Antifa or BLM riots that we saw, uh, the LA riots in the early 1990s, or the Watts riots, I think they were in the um, 60s or 70s. Uh, that is one type of situation, right? And for those types of situations, you're probably going to want to go uh, more play carrier. If you're looking at a situation where you have to evacuate from a natural disaster, you're probably going to want to go more chest rig, right? Something where you have to maintain uh, security on the move or something like that. Not necessarily, we're not talking about VCQB. VCQB, you're going to want to go um, you know, play carrier for sure, but we're talking about some type of evacuation scenario. Some people like to refer to it as, as bug out, escape and evade, whatever. We're really talking about a civilian situation, uh, Hurricane Katrina, Hurricane Harvey, uh, wildfires. I've lived through a number of those myself, uh, being from Southern California, and I've lived through them both as a private citizen as, as well as a law enforcement officer conducting evacuations. So uh, again, if you have to move away, evacuate, etc. Um, you know, you live in South Florida, something like that, Chester is probably going to be a little bit better. If you have to do vehicle stuff um, and you're worried about close contact, play care is going to be better. Okay. Uh, now on Messi, we've covered mission, medical, environment, and now we're going to move on to sustainment. So uh, a quick note about sustainment before we dive into it. First, think about your physical fitness level, okay? You're just gonna wanna know how far you can move, uh, what types of movement you can do in your kit. Do you actually work out in your kit? How much does it weigh, et cetera? Make sure that you do those things. And we've got a great article with a lot more details down in the show notes below uh, that'll help you with some diagnostic tools and uh, establishing baseline um, knowledge about your physical fitness level and what your capabilities are for your kit. Uh, but basically, you're going to want to just think about your physical fitness level and uh, you're going to want to stay well within your uh, metabolic capacity to be able to move this kit around. Because remember, when you move kit, you're burning water, you're sweating, and you're losing uh, water. And you're, that's going to require more hydration, more sustainment. So that's where we really get into the crux of where sustainment plays into the plate carrier versus chest rig uh, question. So if you have access to more supplies, to more food, more calories, more water, et cetera, then a play carrier becomes an easier solution because you can replenish those calories, you can replenish that hydration, uh, that sustenance, that nutrition that you're gonna lose by moving the weight of the armor around. If, however, you do not have access to sustainment, right? So sustainment is gonna be like home defense, uh, shelter in place scenarios, any type of use of castle doctrine, uh, mounted vehicle operations, anything where some structure or some other apparatus can carry your uh, food and water, your sustainment supplies, then play carrier is the way to go. Now, if you find yourself, again, like we mentioned, in an evacuation scenario, then uh, so bugging out, et cetera, or somewhere, some situation where you have to carry more of the, your sustainment on your person or on your back, you're definitely going to want to go with a chest rig because, as you can see, chest rigs make it super, super easy to carry a ruck or integrate a pack of some sort uh, on the back, um, even with uh, you know our Ice Plate XO CRH um, with integrated hydration, much, much easier to do uh, with a chest rig, uh, and obviously the front is self-explanatory. So uh, that's our notes on sustainment, and uh, moving on in messy, we're going to move on uh, last but not least, is identification. Now, what the heck do we mean by identification? Justin, I've already got my ID on me. I don't need my passport. And yeah, screw Vax passports. That's not a thing and should never be a thing here in America. So uh, it truly really shouldn't be a thing anywhere in the world, but it's really it should never be a thing here in America. So what are we really talking about when we talk about identification? We're really talking about PID, positive identification. Okay, can you identify and articulate threats and targets? We kind of touched on this a little bit more in legal, but it is really, really important. If 
positive identification is mission critical, which it probably should be for most of you, even in military and law enforcement settings, especially in law enforcement, um, and really especially in today's military, then uh, you may want to consider how to get yourself uh, the greatest probability of achieving positive identification. Uh, in closer quarters, in shorter distances, uh, more confined spaces, that's gonna be armor and protection to buy you a little bit more time. Maybe you just need that one split second to make sure that you can identify, um, visually identify and articulate what the threat is to you. Uh, chest rigs, not as great in that scenario, but maybe you find yourself in a scenario where you have tons and tons of standoff, you have magnified optics, you have drones, you have ISR, whatever, in which case, great, chest rigs are awesome. Uh, so that pretty much sums up our 50,000 foot overview of things that you should consider uh, for your answering your question of should you get a plate carrier or should you get a chest rig? Um, We'd love to know what build you guys would like to see from us in the next video. So drop those thoughts in the comments below and let us know, are you building out a plate carrier or are you building out a chest rig and why? Well, that's all we've got for today, guys, but we thank you so much for joining us. We thank you very much for your attention. Uh, we hope you'll tune back in, uh, turn on those notifications and subscribe because we got tons more of this content coming your way this year. We can't wait to bring it to you guys. It's gonna be really, really exciting. And don't forget to drop us a like if you guys found this content helpful. And until then, stay frosty.